The global consumer goods industry is changing rapidly. While the focus is mainly on emerging markets such as China, Brazil, Russia or Africa, mature markets like Western Europe receive much less attention. However, there are significant changes ahead in Western Europe and they will come fast. The consumer landscape and shopper behavior will undergo a massive transformation. Economic pressures and demographic shifts will lead to zero growth in the mass. Over the next 15 years, many countries will undergo a stark polarization. Economic stagnation and the mass exodus of the baby boomer generation into retirement will increasingly overburden social security systems. The middle class faces a situation of wages increasing slower than costs. People will respond by rigorously controlling consumption. As a result, manufacturers are faced with the mass of the market hardly growing. High growth will prevail in select niches but will become increasingly fragmented. While the mass market is stagnating, diverse fragments of growth exist. Such consumers increasingly look for products with health benefits, personalization, convenient use and or social and environmental sustainability. This will lead to a vast increase of distinct yet much smaller target markets for FMCG. Consumers will increasingly mix and match shopping locations to best fit their needs. Discount, still in its infancy in many Western European countries today, will gain significant share in selected categories also with higher earning consumers. With the rise of e-grocery, consumer inertia has become the new source of brand loyalty. Winners are on the list, not on the shelf. It's taking a bit longer than expected, but grocery e-tailing will finally reach significant scale. E-consumers, however, shop very differently. Instead of browsing the aisles, consumers will stick to their shopping list and just repurchase. For FMCG manufacturers, it will hence become critical to be part of this list. Change will not only be caused by the consumer, but also by seismic shifts in the industry dynamics. New digital opportunities, as well as the growing threat of vertical e-commerce players, will drive adoption of direct-to-consumer models. As digital startups enter the space, replenishment-driven direct-to-consumer model will become increasingly common. Vertically integrated, they will directly compete in the field of FMCG incumbents. Secondly, online retailers like Amazon will continue to vertically integrate, offering more and more private label products. A new league of insightful FMCG giants will master the recipe to effectively market at the granular level. The level of consumer insights will increase across the industry, yet only a few players will be able to go beyond the new normal of digital and build true USPs. Those insightful FMCG giants will continuously and deeply interact with consumers and market at the most granular level, the segment of one. Activist investors further increase performance pressure and drive new waves of cost rebasing and consolidation. They demand higher profitability and force companies to not only rigorously rebase cost structures within their companies, but will set new standards of profitability for the entire category. Eventually, this will cause a new race for scale, which will lead to an unseen wave of consolidation in the market. Finally, change will come about through external factors outside of the industry. Regulators will transfer and destroy industry value pools through more demanding production and retail standards. More frequent shocks to globally interconnected supply chains will occur caused by natural disasters, social unrest, resource scarcities or other disruptions. Employees' needs will continue to evolve and will lead to increasing demand for flexibility and sustainable work-life balances. To win, companies need to adapt and master one or more of the following four success models of tomorrow. In the absence of growth in core markets, no frills players will heavily cut cost and streamline the portfolio. Thereby, they will be able to achieve top-line growth through share gains taking competitors out of business organically or through M&A. The resulting scale will also help to better position against retailers. Successful players will understand private label not just as a defensive move, but pursue it competitive to their branded business. Initially, many will consider this move risky, but it will turn out that deep integration actually creates a strong lock-in for retailers. Some FMCG manufacturers will choose to proactively serve a multitude of emerging niches. 
In order to do so in a profitable way and not get drowned in complexity, they need to reinvent their operating model. They need to build an agile product development process and master the ability to compensate scale deficiencies through platforming techniques. This will allow development of new products in an unprecedented short amount of time and with significant lower investment and scale requirements. Wherever possible, FMCG companies should search for a direct path to the consumer. The successful ones will invest in product innovation and brand building and build dedicated organizations. Every FMCG company will need to decide which of the operating models of the future are suited best for it to address the challenges ahead. While most companies will pursue at least one or two of them, the mix will significantly vary. How well FMCG companies answer these questions will determine whether a company belongs to the winners or losers in the consumer world of tomorrow.